from the past would draw 14, 15 amps. Well, that's the that's right on the edge of of tripping, you know, an, an exterior uh, GFI. Amp breaker. I mean, if, if you're pulling as much, there's a light on or something. Yeah, like yeah. On you, there. God knows a refrigerator if you're plugged into their their garage. Right. And, and something I want to see. I see some eyes blazing over because this happens every time I talk to Tim about booster pumps. You've got Tim talking about hertz and stages and all that. You could not have two people that operate, I'd say, more differently. <laughs> They're one of my best friends in the world. But Tim can sit there and listen to these things and go, yeah, we're getting air in the third stage and blah, blah, blah. And, and, and this is also a man that literally tears his, his rig apart for fun. That's you know, yes, yes, you do, you do. Um, he knows more, but, but that's Tim. He's inquisitive in nature, and he's an expert on these pumps. He's a guy like me with OSHA. He calls Goulds. I, I run crews, and I take this plug, plug it into a wall, and it goes. I mean, so I, I, Tim's like, what's it doing? I'm like, I don't know. I mean, so literally, I mean, I, I give my pump to people and say, go out and make me money. And, and Tim, I mean, I drive it like a damned old pickup truck, and, and Tim drives his like a Ferrari. Um, and that's one of the reasons I'd say we love these these pumps, because we found that no matter what level you're at, you know, where, where you're at, how you operate your business, you know, they're great for you. I can promise you, you know, I, I, go, flush valve, flush valve, proportionate, you know. My guys called me the other day, Ray, this thing's broken. What do you mean it's broken? It's not, chemicals not coming out. And I had used that truck the day before myself. I flushed it. And I'm like, uh, did you show the flush valve? What's the flush valve? <laughs> sure, right? no, 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 no. I don't, no, sure. I believe you. Yeah, and, and, my, and I was like, you know, that valve on the top that we're supposed to turn on every day to rinse it out? Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, oh, yeah, crap. So again, two totally different ways of, of using equipment. I have, I mean, my guys can screw up an anvil. Um, and, and, and Tim's gone, look, no, good. good. Um, so it's just, just different, you know, different ways of, of, of methods of using it. Yeah, for the longest time, we just had inferior umps, and uh, you know, we would just. Raymond said it's under. We would just throw them away. Yeah. You know? and, you know, I was I was one of the bad ones. On, you know, on, on the old RCIA forum, on the NSWA, I, you know, I would sit here and say, uh, you know, I get I get I replace them every six months, whether I need them or not. Um, I don't know how it, what it takes to kill a Goulds at this point because the one Goulds that, that Tim uh, and I pulled, oh, yeah, the one Goulds that I have yeah, yeah, developed yeah, yeah, the chemical yeah, yeah. Uh, on there that my guys again. Guys, I like, you know, I look at one of the rigs. Small chemical. Chemi small chemical leak, leak yeah. yeah. Um, small. I was like, how long has this been going on? Oh, I don't know, a couple months or so. Where I had, <laughs> thanks, guys. The um, bottom bracket was gone. Yeah, yeah, literally. So, pull it out. I was like, Tim, come over and help me with this thing. And I was getting a little short in the motor. Well, so we're going to fix this. We're going to film it and take pictures of it. So, great, cool spot. Somebody dropped it. Um, Saying it bends it. But that's been the only cool that I've seen. Somebody. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's been the only Goulds that, that we've killed in, in two and a half to three years of me using Goulds pumps now. Um, and, and, and it died because, you know, you somebody it. dropped it. And it's, uh. <laughs> <laughs> and it's really sad. But these things are, are, you know, we're fixable. We can repair them. We, we can keep going. And, and I hear guys, I hear contractors are like, well, yeah, you got to fix it. I'm sorry, who hasn't replaced a belt on their on their pressure washer? I mean, all of our equipment takes repair. Yeah, it's and honestly, even if even if I had to pull this thing up and pitch it away after six months, every six months this this thing has made me eighty to a hundred thousand yeah. dollars. Wow. So I think it's a I think it's a fair thing, you know. Uh, Joe is Joe playing it around? Yeah, yeah, he's coming. He did a video the other day. He's like, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm finding it. He, he replaced this. He's like, I do not maintain this thing, and it's made me a ton of money. And yeah. yeah. If anything can make it through Raymond's company, yeah. It's, <laughs> <right>. <laughs> uh, the, again, the long-lasting. If you, you like, when I first started talking, I said we apply and we rinse with these pumps and that, that that's the intended use when we're talking about solutions you, you 
you run the solution through, you turn your three-way, or you hit your remote, turn your three-way, brings fresh water in, you rinse. So everybody knows you can apply pretty darn quick, especially with these and a good, a good nozzle, but it takes a little longer to rinse. So you see the process, you're, you're running a solution through it, then you're flushing it out every time. That's the intended use, and that's where you're gonna get the longest life out of them. If you use them for roof cleaning, and you apply with it, it's gonna do it. And then maybe you might wet the plants a little bit and then put it up, you know? Uh, that's really not its intended use. You know, you really need to, to rinse with them. Uh, they're great rinse pumps, uh, you know? Um, so, again, model numbers is what I've been talking about. We need the right internals on these. We need, uh, we need Viton. You know, we need the stainless, we need all these different things. We need this totally enclosed fan-cooled motor that Raymond didn't have that allowed the bleach <laughs> leaking on it for six months to kind of kill it before I bent the shaft. Well, I was really, really never got <laughs> No, I knew, I knew, I knew, I just, it just slipped, it just slipped. Um, here's here's some pictures. This is actually some uh, some. Uh, this is a pumping station, right? And these are well tanks that Raymond sprayed. And you can see the top of this just covered in fungus lichen. And you know, garden hose nozzle. There it is in his hand. And you know, spray and rinse, spray and rinse, spray and rinse. Um, this is the top of a water tower that they're spraying and rinsing with a booster pump. It's 150 foot to the, to the top of the bowl on there. Yeah, so they actually were able to... What kind of loss did you have? I would say we had 30% loss at, at 150 foot. And we don't really know. I mean, there, the head pressures on these are outrageous, so we don't really know how high we can go with them. Uh, but there, there hasn't been a height that's, that's stalled the booster right. pump. Yeah. It's not going to happen. Did, I, I did a uh, uh, well, pepper building downtown. That was 14 stories. Um, you know, I had the truck down there and I still had, you know, good flow coming up 14 stories on there. So. Yeah, you can see him, you know, he's, the, the truck is down here on, on this level and he's up, you know, in the scissor there, hitting the top of the building, you know, so uh, the, the power and the distance that you can get out of them is just, you're not, it's, you're not going to be hindered by height. It just, again, it goes back to the power of it, the, the motor source. Um, and when we spoke on this a little bit earlier, so if you let off the nozzle, this pump will just sit, you can see the internals of it, it'll just sit there and spin. And just like your pressure washer, you either have to recirculate the pump, you know, the, the, out, of the, out of the head of the pump, you got to get it out of there, it's going to heat up, you know, if you're going to do that, uh, put it back to a tank. <coughs> Or you're going to have this, if you hook to a garden hose, there's a small bypass, it just keeps kind of going in there. So we've got to do something with these. And for years, we didn't do anything with them. We just knew that you couldn't run it for more than, you know, five to seven minutes without feeling some temperature come through the dang nozzle the next time you screw it. Literally, on a garden hose nozzle, you, know, you, you tell them to turn on it, and you're, it gets warm. I mean, you feel, not, yeah. not burn yourself hot, but it, it gets Well, that's, that's what you don't want. The longer you let it sit, it just gets hotter and hotter and hotter. So we had to come up with a way to keep it from doing that. So the unloader system kind of gave it a circulation, but it really didn't buy you a lot of time because it still got hot in there because it was only, a, you know, the, the circulation's only this long. That's, that's just a little bit more fluid that's moving through it. So it actually will start to heat up and kind of heat and heat and heat and heat and heat. So, uh, uh, the pro switch was developed to turn it off and if you can see it's a square D pressure switch you can't run sodium hypochlorite up the diaphragm of a square D pressure switch you can but not for very long so it had to be separated from the solution so um, I came up with a design with this one and it simply has a jumper it goes around, it'll come around to the front, sense the pressure, and turns it off. So you're basically on demand. We demonstrated that one yesterday. And they can be finicky when you're first setting it up, but when you when you get it, 
uh, and it just you let off the nozzle and it turns off I mean you have one I know you want some more of those things but do you have one and it just I like you said I'm cheap <laughs> <laughs> I, I have I have my pro switch is named Mikey <laughs> Mikey turn the pump off <laughs> and, and, and really I mean and again it's just different ways I mean you've got your older operators that you know that, that have these these niceties on there I, I can't I can't get a, I can't express enough how you can treat this thing like the red-headed stepchild like my guys do or you you know on that great example this is before Tim ever, ever came up with the pro switch we were on that water tower remember that and you were I were sitting there talking because we we're gonna do some flow tests and all up there and wind up talking and, and, and get busy and my guys got the lift stuck under the water tower um, but Tim and I were sort of like oh crap the is pump's that, on. Is that pump running? Yeah and, and we you know we have been talking for 10 minutes or so and the guys had come down from the water tower we were about to get out of the lift drop the hose down and we're like oh crap the damn pump's on and, and i was like well you think it's okay of course we turned it off turned it back on and spraying like like crazy yeah, so they're, they're, this isn't they're tougher one of these things they're where, tougher than you think you know it's like oh my god you're gonna turn it off right now you're gonna blow it no it's not i mean they're really really nice and bold so it is it is the true enemy of the pump the heat uh, you can imagine um, you have these diffuser plates and when we pass that around that's that's a diffuser plate and so this one is 14 stages the stack that we have is 17 stages so in between every stage is a diffuser plate um, it's a designed wearable part if we made these or they made these out of another material we may have issues down the line so this is actually made to be the first thing that fails okay so it's it's good for it, it's good to have something like that uh, these are five six bucks a piece so in a complete rebuild of this you may or may not need to do an impeller uh, sometimes these grind on the impeller if you do an impeller I think it's eight to ten dollars so but you know you're looking at you know less than a hundred bucks to do the whole thing uh, and then you got then you have a whole nother life of your pump right what are the signs that your discs are going bad when you rebuild it? Loss of pressure, okay. uh, hard starts. Okay. Um, sometimes they'll actually break, yeah, that's the impeller of it. Sometimes they'll actually uh, come apart and little pieces of that diffuser will get lodged. I've had it, it. I've had it hit. You can hear it, it's gonna, well, to well, me it's gonna sound funny. I can tell, I'm like, oh man, something's not going on with that. And you can tell though you're, you're going to start slowly it's not like it just a shut down sometimes it, if it's something lodges in it you just shut down and, and on, on a job pull the tube take that piece out put it back on and get back to work you can do that uh you know we have done that what but, I, and, and, you know, one of the things you say and and they they tend to die a a, a slow death right. unless they get dropped <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> i ordered you that new pump <laughs> they tend to die a slow death, and so you'll lose a stage or two or three. Right. And, and, you, you, and it's funny, not so much with these, but it's, but the Myers and, and the Daytons that we use, and, and they're like, I'm just not getting as much. I'm only getting 20 foot out of this. And then you put a new one on, you're and like, you're like, oh, my God, I yeah. forgot how awesome these things are. But they, they tend to just peter out a little bit. Right. So they're, they're, they're basically wearable parts. If you... The better you treat them and you don't overheat them and you know you don't that you're just going to be better off you're going to get longer life out of them but uh, again use it as it's intended spray rinse spray rinse spray rinse um yeah you know, joe joe brought the video with his and hey and joe's like i rinse with my eight gallon a minute pressure washer mm -hmm. I, I don't know but you know he literally you know sprays bleach out of it puts it up yeah, doesn't really rinse that's it out. hard on he's yeah. had it for a year and he's having to, to you know replace stages finally yeah. but it should again it's a different type of use but the abuse that these things can they, take. they're they're tougher than than you think tim real quick if you start getting clogged tips because I, <laughs> I, I, I think this? I own for the worst destruction of the yeah, diffusers. Yeah, no, you, yeah, you, I mean, my guys, we had either debris in there and then it was tripping. And on the back end of it, you can twist it, it which will get it to keep running, but managed to destroy, I think, all but one stage. Yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah, like. You, you fried that one yes. pretty good. I mean, and it was it was definitely a bit overheated. It was not my fault. It was my guy's fault. I but. may have seen one more worse than that. But, uh, but, uh, yeah. but in my use of them, I, I was like, wow. I've never seen one that bad before, but um, 
And what's crazy, those things, is it was working up to that point, too. You know? Yeah. I mean, I mean it, still, and we, we still managed to get through that job. Yeah. That didn't you know. just happen like that. It, it had been oh, happening. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, flow and PSI. Again, we had the flow meter out there and the PSI gauge out there. And, and we talked about, you know, 5 GPM. Well, that pump is a 5 GPM Goulds three-quarter horse right there. Five is the optimum GPM. It can flow one to eight. Okay, and probably go higher than eight if you supply it with a dang good water supply on positive water. So you can you can tip it down, and uh, we didn't tip, and I wish we had it, but you can see this adapter uh, that I built uh, for mine, and I and and. Uh, a lot of people have them now, but I can put whatever orifice size pressure washing tip in there and reduce my flow because again, I can go all the way down to one if I want to. It just has to be doing at least one. So if I put a, on my particular pump, if I can go down as low as putting a 10 orifice in there, 15 degree, because I'm using that garden hose nozzle, the pattern opens up later keeps it off of me, opens up where I need it. It's just, I like the 15 degree, but a 10 orifice in there, I can bring my GPM down to about two and a half, two and three quarter GPM. Now, when I'm spraying my hot solutions, I can keep up with that. It's hard to keep up with five and a half gallons a minute of, of three, four, five percent sodium hypochlorite. It's gonna run off whatever the heck you're spraying it on. You're gonna have too much, you don't need it. So the other good thing as well, for especially for roofs, is that it gives you that PSI, you know? So you're not just trickling out, you can actually, you know, paint good swipes with it, uh, but you can, you can customize it because you can adjust the flow on it. It's not a set thing, there's a range. It's just, a, it's just an optimum it likes to run at. Um, and again, there's the Gilmore uh, garden hose nozzle. This is probably what Raymond's talking about. I was bored one day at the uh, fire station and I stripped my pump and... That's not what I'm talking about. <laughs> so, anyways, you can, you can see, uh, you know, how the, this, is a, this is a one horse, 17 stage. It looks like a ton of stuff, but I've got it all spread out. But those are all, your, these are all the, the bowls, the impellers, and the diffuser plates. And so from the intake, it goes to the first one, then it gets boosted to the next one, and then boosted to the next one. So you can kind of see the more power you have and the more stages you have, the greater PSIs we're gonna reach. The flow is determined by the holes that are actually in here. So if you, you can see on the side, you've got five ports. If you look kind of on the back, you can see one, two, three, four, five. So as we go to, it'll stamp right on there, 5 GPM. When we go to the 7 GPM, it's a little bit larger. My, my two horse 10 GPM has really big holes in there. So it's just giving more volume coming through. And again, the 10 has a, has a, a variance of flows in it as well. The seven is the next size up, it does as well. So they're not just made for one certain flow. So, uh, you can see how they all work out, and then if you had to replace those, basically pull it off, we'll do that in a minute, and uh, put it back on. When and, and how, when is when you have a problem like Rob does and it doesn't work. Uh, for me, I just kind of check on it every now and then just to make sure that it... The, the other big thing, it was tripping the, the... It tripped every last bit of electricity we could... Cook That's could because cook. it's not operating properly, yep, and, exactly. and, and I'll talk about the startup on it is really tough and if there's restriction it's even tougher and then that's when you're going to trip so it won't even turn on because trying to get started it'll it'll draw too much and pop here's one uh, actually this is the one um <laughs> yeah and, and you can see uh, i'm not i wasn't lying about this uh there is no base left it was completely rusted and falling apart because it had been a constant drip on it. It wasn't its fault. It was his fault. Um, but so we got it all. We actually got it all, you know, taken apart. And, and I, you know, I, right off the top when he told me what the problems he was having, I said, uh, more than likely we just got some diffusers or whatever. Well, it turned out to be the actual motor. But 
That right there is what they call an open drip motor. And it actually has ports in the back and you can get humidity and bleach and Those everything else in it. you can spray down with water right there. It's right. Just this just temp out the totally enclosed fan cooled motor. Right. This is a totally enclosed fan cooled motor where we're not, the environment that we're in, you can leave that, well, you can run it in the rain, you can do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. um, it's made to be totally enclosed and not be susceptible to, to the corrosion and rusting and everything of the environment like under his truck. Well, um, and, and, you know, and honestly, it seems <laughs> like, okay, well, is this, you know, is this the motor you, I told you to get? And I'm like, yeah, of course it is. In all fairness, like I said, I'm cheap. I went on to eBay and I'm like, okay, this looks like one that I should get, and I bought the wrong, you know, motor. I try, I said, I saved a hundred dollars. Uh, and but that was still over yeah. a year old, yeah. and yeah. and being drip. So imagine, you know, the motors on these, and these actually have lower amperage draw than yeah. the, than this type of motor for this actual pump. Um, and we, we took them all off. He had some pitting in there. Uh, you can see his finger pointing to the pitting on the, the, the shot to the left there. We cleaned them all up, got them all cleaned up, and then I dropped the darn motor, and so we, we weren't able to use it. But now we still have some extra stages and stuff that we can use. Um, here's just a shot of a roof. Um, I mean, we, we've all before and after pictures, but... Um, All right, uh, questions about the pump, we'll take a few and then I want to actually take it apart and you know, act like a... Is there, a, is there a difference in the diameter between the five and the seven or is it just a hose? There is no difference between the five, seven, ten, eighteen as far as I know. Uh, they're all one inch in, one inch in and one inch out. So you could make your five or seven. The tube you could if you put if you but you got to worry about your motor, and you if you go to seven now you got a larger orifice, more volume we're trying to push. You're not going to be able to get it. You can make a hybrid. You could probably throw some sevens in a five and make a six and still be fairly efficient. Um, but what you run into is is if you have it set uh, one horse run 17 stages at 5 GPM. So if you did, if you went and put all sevens in there, then it's gonna require a little bit more horsepower to turn that many. You would, in a seven GPM, you wouldn't be able to put that many stages in a seven GPM. It's all about uh, gearing the, the, the transmission to the motor, basically. So if you're out of whack one way or the other, you're not gonna be efficient. It's gonna probably run, draw more amps, stuff like that. That's why they're tuned the way they're tuned. They make a one horsepower seven. They do make a one. I have yeah, one horse, but I think it's uh, it's 16 stages instead of 17, if I'm correct. Uh, and and they'll they'll vary in and out. Um, another question. Uh, Raymond and I have been, you know, I've I've been with him. I've done of course done this for many years, but I was with him, and we were spraying a hotel, and he was hitting the top of the fourth floor window on a three-quarter horse on a decent day. Wind is a, a decent day. Wind is always about there. Yesterday, you, I've been down to the coast and trying to clean a beach house and just, you know, and, and then, you, then you, you try to put English on it and hook it, you know, or you wait and you sneak it, you know, but, it, you know, I mean, any, anything is going to be that way you know even in the fire service with our big you know big lines and stuff you know you're always going to run into certain factors but uh anything three-story typically you can hit no issues with it mm -hmm. um and again this is a fairly restrictive garden hose nozzle that we're using uh you can rig some stuff up and and if you want to go a little higher or get a little bit more psi or, or everything out of it uh, you can kind of tune these like you can tune a, a car engine. You can take, like I do, um, if, you, if you see my equipment from the end of the booster, I basically, I have a T and then it senses my pressure. And this is just a jumper or a whip. It's got garden hose fittings on it. So 
Mine comes right out. I pull off the hose I need. I tie directly into that. I have no 90s. I, have, I don't have any, any type of restrictions and stuff. So I don't go through the swivel and the waterway and, and all that. Uh, you know, it, it's a measurable difference in it. Is it a, a tremendous difference? It's not a tremendous difference, but it is a difference. And it's just the way I like to run mine. Um, so uh, you can soup them up. Five eighths hose is wonderful. I don't like dragging it around, you know. The half inch hose is great, but it's restrictive. So I actually do both, you know. Shooter by the, really yeah. Shooter, shooter tip with those? Yeah, do a shooter tip and we're, we're, uh, we're I have, I have black and Yeah, I, I do too. And, well, what I found with the shooter tip, um, my the guard on the garden hose nozzle. And this is the way I ran it on the, that little the tip that you saw. It's kind of a sloppy pattern. It's kind of a lot of, you know, mist and it's broken up and stuff. Yeah, it starts, it, it, it breaks kind of early. And when I put the shooter tip in, what I found was my pattern cleaned up. Mm -hmm. It was more of a beam and it, I like to call it, it broke, you know, when it started losing its pattern, it broke later. So it was cleaner and broke later. And the distance was, they were about the same. I didn't really see like, you know, an extra, sure enough, but it was so clean. Mm -hmm. I was like, wow, now I'm not having all this mist and everything. You know, I got, you know, it took, I think it was the 50 or the 60. I can't remember which shooter it was, but what you, even, you can put whatever you want on. Even throwing a two foot one on the end of the garden, that'll also help out yeah, a lot you if you're having get, it just, you know, right, starts you breaking. A I mean, the garden hose nozzle is just, you know, it's just simple. It's so yeah. convenient. I mean, it's yeah, it is. It is. It is. Um, Somebody in the back have their hand up. Uh, on the diffuser plates, does it matter what order they go in, or do you, I mean, when you switch them up, do you take them apart? No, no, no. They're they're all the same diffuser plates. They're all they're all the same. They shim they shim the inside of these. Um, we're done with that. They shim the inside of these uh, pumps, and I'll, we'll go ahead and show you that now. It's very, very difficult to see, but this is just a little shim. I mean, it's, it's not even, it's... Looks like a washer. <laughs> it's a very thin washer, so it's, it's basically a shim. And at, at, at Gould's, when they put these together, they have a way of what they call tuning it. And I'm yet to master that, but they apparently, well, a little bit there, so I can put this in there. When you go to do yours and, and put it all back in, just put them where they were. It's not super important, but you need to have the same amount of shims in there. Don't don't uh, don't stack them all at the front. Don't stack them all at the back. Um, one important thing while we're talking about this is when you have these, and, and you basically you have a clip on the end. I'm trying to keep this table from collapsing on me. So you have a clip on the end, and if we pass that around, you saw it, and the, you know, all that goes on, it just clips, and that just holds it on there. So, five? Did you say five, or you just waving, hey? Hey, without the right tools, and you think you're gonna go out there on the job site and rebuild one, it makes you want to kill somebody. <laughs> this, this is what I use to break this one apart. Butter knife from the restaurant. Um, I'm taking that cylinder off. Yeah, 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 and we'll get to that too. But so what, what you guys need to be concerned with that a lot of people are really concerned with is this first, there, there's, a, there's basically a, a, a lip inside here where the first bowl goes into. You need to make sure when you clean this up that you clean that out because that's a point where it can bind. And there's a certain amount of shims that are in this first one. Always put that exact amount back in there because you want to keep distance off of that shoulder right there. You just want to make sure that's right. Yeah, Whatever that's... you see when you take it off, put it back like that. Mm -hmm. So as you start to, to repair, I'm going to repair this. Okay, there's, there's not one here. You know, I pull, there is one here. So I have a shim there. And if you're not careful, it, gone it rolls off if it's got moisture in it, like this one does it'll hold it to it but so there'll be shims periodically placed through here and there's usually 
on a three-quarter horse there's probably 10 or 12 maybe and they could be as many as 15 or 16 on a one horse because we have more stages so but definitely clean that that out in there i've had issues with that um, it gets you know you get the sodium drop out and you get some rust mm -hmm. and stuff in there clean that out when you go to take this off first time i did it was awesome i about just like Andy was talking about, I drove myself crazy because I didn't realize it was left hand thread. <laughs> so I was tightening the heck out of this thing, going, What in the world? It can't be this damn. And I was thinking that the bleach had destroyed it and it was just frozen and locked up. And then I was like, Well, let me try it the other way. And it broke. I'm like, God, I can't believe it did that. The right tool. Yeah, yeah. Well, the best, the best tool, honestly to get these off it's just a big pair of channel locks mm -hmm. and don't take it off by using this on the end this is that's not what this is for this is actually right hand thread so this is righty tighty lefty at least this one here is so if you do try to do that and and you you can tighten it by using that but when you go to take it off you're going to have you're going to have an issue but you don't want to use the threads to spin it so i usually take the channel locks and get it here where the threads are underneath here is the strongest point and just break it loose now remember to break it loose you tighten it mm -hmm. yeah imagine that so uh, but that, that's what a strap what, wrench you know a strap, strap wrench it, can work you know. i busted a couple i the, had the other big thing is i'll take both hands and kind of keep it level and make sure that when i'm torquing it oh, that yeah, that yeah. way it, it Right. It'll actually it'll go on and off a lot better that well, way. Well, yeah, how long that is, and the threads are way here on the end. It'll it'll kind of bind, so it'll mm -hmm. make it harder. Just make sure that it's straight. Yep. Oil and, filter <laughs> yeah, the 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 oil filter. I mean, if it's a good metal one, a good one. Um, but if it's one of those uh, rubber strap type wrenches, Harper Freight. Tink, broke it. I mean, a bunch of them. Is there a, uh, you mentioned torque? Is there a a certain pattern, like the no, 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 no. And and uh, most people think that oh, I gotta tighten it back up. Mine, I do by hand. Mm -hmm. So the next time I go to take it off, I do by hand. Yep. I just rebuilt uh, uh, Jose uh, Aguilar's in uh, at Gray's shop, and I cranked it by hand, and I saw all of my numbers and everything line back up. And he's like, "Aren't you gonna tighten that?" I said, "I just did." He said by hand, and I said, yeah, because the next time you take it off, you're not going to want to do that. It's protected by these O-rings in here. Mm -hmm. You have an O-ring here, and you have an O-ring in here as well. And that's one of the reasons I don't want you to, if you over-tighten this, you're going to bear down on that O-ring in the front. So just don't, don't you don't even have to do anything with that. Uh, you know, you can just take, and here's the, here's the first thing in here, and this is a spacer. And this will go on the end and keep the very last one in place and this is this is used for a couple of different things and when we have longer tubes and you can less stages they'll just a lot of times they'll just adapt this to it a little more a little less to to give or take um, make sure this goes back in the right way if you put it in like that it doesn't go like that that's designed to go on the end so that'll go in there first and then Get all your washers on, put your clip back on. Make sure, like this one here, make sure that there's play in there. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people put not it just but don't put it back together right and it's super, super tight. Well there's no way, you know, that you're gonna that it's gonna run efficiently if it if you can't even turn it, you know. And for some reason when you do that, I've seen that, it makes a lot of pressure for some reason. It really will start blowing hoses and all kind of stuff. Um, so just make sure that everything's nice and, and free. Clean these threads. Take you a toothbrush or whatever, clean these threads. I use Magic Lube. It's a, a, a non-petroleum, you know, uh, lube. It's like a jelly almost, so, but it's non-petroleum, so it's good. I think. Brenda, you agree that in the spa business or whatever, that's that's what you you don't want to. Uh, it, sometimes it affects your O-rings and stuff. So clean it up, lube it up, and uh, put it back on by hand. Tighten it up. You can tighten it back up with a strap wrench. It's not going to make a difference. It's going to run. Yeah, I mean, with, once it's tight, it's tight. It's I mean, tight. you're only going to get it to go a tiny bit more if you really torque it. But. Right. You've got uh, three quarters of an inch of fine thread, so it's okay. So it's locked down good. So. Uh, you know basically you got to pull all this 
stuff off that you created all these things and but with mine it's just a T I, I undo my pro switch I take the pro switch off and then I have this jumper is all I got so I can just spin mine off because I'm I'm doing maintenance on mine I know I'm gonna do maintenance on it you're gonna you're gonna do maintenance on it so don't build them to where you got to take off six you got to take off six or seven different fittings and heat up hoses and all that just make it simple make it easy on yourself you know you know, something else that you want to point out about these is they're they're so incredibly versatile. This is where I, I caused Tim those gray hairs. <laughs> hey Tim, um, you know those things are great at spraying acid. How do you know? Because I sprayed muriatic acid out of it last night. Uh, caustic degreasers, muriatic acids. Oh, um, you know, I, I spray everything out of this. That's so probably know. through your proportioner as well. I guess. Yeah, true. Yeah. Yeah, we found out the limitations <laughs> of that as well. Yeah. We <laughs> But now these things are great. I mean, it's not just water and bleach. I mean, you can spray. I, I use like on, on my parking garages that I do. I'll go in there and, and put a caustic degreaser down, or just or just you know my EBC down um, with a pickup tube on my on my proportioner. You know, either put in a soap tank or a three way on, on the soap tube. Um, and so now it's freed up my my it's freed up my pressure washer right. for the guys to go ahead and start cutting in the corners because we're not downstreaming the stuff out of this. I mean, this and, is and, and with pressure washing and, and everybody thinks I'm just soft wash where I am now because I sold him my last pressure washer. But with with pressure washing, this is a hell of a rinse behind a surface cleaner. So you apply, a, I, I would always hit my, my concrete pretty hot before we, before we surface cleaned it. I'd spray it solution. He starts the, with the surface cleaner start scrubbing and I'm behind them rinsing so when he's done we're done you know and I and the solution if you you know if you put a good enough solution on you give it a little bit of dwell time you know those those corners you know I like to call it mowing the grass and then you got a weedy you know you got the corners and everything with that garden hose nozzle I could sit there for you know just a few seconds and get that to where you couldn't even you, you could tell a little bit but when it's dry you're never going to see it uh, even, so even after a surface cleaner, when the, you do the edges and all that, yeah. and you, you got everybody goes back to the lawn and right. blowing that stuff back yeah. at you, you throw a, a mix on top yeah. of that, you come back with the booster and the nozzle. Yeah, and it's as well as with the proportioner, but but to be able to throw a solution on, and then when you're done, or if you do it and it's just covered in acorn stains and pine straw stains and all the tanning acid type stains or whatever, but if you if you get a nice hot solution, three four, you know, depend what whatever you can put on it, if it's if it's really super nice grass and it's the middle of summer and it's stuff it's going to be tougher you got to be you know careful with it and stuff but you can throw that hot solution on top of there and get rid of all that stuff when you're done and you get rid of all those you know you've seen the freeways the racetracks you know all striped up and down the that's great for doing that and you can do it quickly spray it on use it to rinse it off as well you don't have to use that lot of a sauce. If you've already, if you've already used your surface cleaner, you got the line. Yeah, yeah. One and a half percent will end up cleaning. Ten seconds. Ten more minutes. Ten minutes. Okay, cool. Um, don't be afraid to take it apart, guys. I mean, like now you've been able to listen to them, see it. it it's, yeah, it's, it's intimidating, and then I'm you take it up, and it's yeah. it's very repetitive. I, I won't say this. I I didn't know that about the end part, and I've taken the end part off. And had a, I had a hard time getting that O-ring back in there right. Now. Yeah, you I, will. I think yeah. I messed it up. The temperature as well. If it's cold out, um, just when uh, Jose came over, he he had we had to replace some diffusers, and he bought all diffusers and all impellers and everything for it, and we didn't need but one impeller in the whole bunch. And it's if you replace more than two or three impellers, you have put a hurting on that thing. I mean, that's a lot of damage to one of these guys. If you do have broken diffusers, check the impellers for broken pieces of plastic too. Cause right, also that's a good, that'll, that's that'll a good, mess it up again that's a good quick. point. I had a friend of mine bring me his, uh, one that I sold him. I had a seven GPM, seven GPM one horse, and uh, it was a 16 stage and it's was, it was strong. He, he said, man, I gotta use this just for wrench. This puts out way too much solution, you know? But he said, uh, my guy said it was, it just kind of gummed up and jammed up and wasn't running. I said, well, what happened to it? He said, well, they didn't put the lid on and I parked it underneath the, where I normally park it and it got full of pine straw. I was literally getting pine straw out of the impellers and the, the sap that was in there was incredible. So everything was tacky 
and the poor pump, it's not, it wasn't its fault, you know, they were running, trying to run pine straw through it, you know. Um, <laughs> so I got it all cleaned out, fired back up, and it works like a champ, but uh, they're, they're tough, but you got to treat it right, you know, it's like anything else we have in life, you got to treat it right or, and, uh, or it'll, it'll bite you. Freezing you know? weather will crack it. Yeah, yeah, okay, I, I, I got a picture from a guy the other day, and I wish I had it on here. We need to put it on here. But at, at the end here, this was out, looked like about an eighth of an inch, and water was just going in the picture. And I said, you froze it, didn't you? He goes, yeah, I didn't realize I froze it, but I did. It was enough to push that out. Now, inside there, there's probably better than a dozen fine threads that hold that on there. Um, and it was working. It was just leaking. You know, it had been completely blocked, frozen, and, and pushed that completely out of it. Uh, but it was still working. It was just leaking. So you obviously can't be spewing, you know, roof solutions out, you know, three or four foot out the end of it. But, well, but, uh, you, would you use the uh, automotive antifreeze like Paul recommends and other things? Or you know, that's a good question. I, I'd, I'd rather some guys that actually need to, to do that I, answer because I just, I did. I have automotive in mind. Do you? Okay. I've heard of uh, windshield wiper fluid, uh, uh, antifreeze type stuff of that, or there's some RV things. Mm -hmm. To me, run it and just get all the fluid out of it. That, that's just, what, that's just what I dry. think we do with it. Yeah, it's dry. Did you, uh, did you wrap it like in Eden's, like when it was put in Eden's blankets and just plug it in? You still got it's, not that, it's not that necessary. Yeah, you, you got mean. three way valves and things of that nature. Those things as well, you know, the accessories that are on it and everything, but uh, just get it dry, you know, just get the stuff out of it. I left mine out, and um, during we had in Tallahassee, we had a whole week of 20s. It's rare. I just loosened the hose clamps on mine, and then I loosened the three way up a little bit. And I just there was some residual in it, and then when I came out in the morning, it was my deck was pink right there because it had pushed it out. But if you don't give it somewhere to go when it expands, that's it. Mm -hmm. Leave all your lines open, all your nozzles open. But you you guys in the cold cold areas need to you know do do something else. But if it if there's nothing in there to freeze and cause damage, when I, when I winterize, I'll hook up air compressor to the fill line, which then you go to the actual positive to your flush or to your, you know, to your priming valve and just open that up and it's just throwing 100 PSI of air right through it. Yeah, I Leave that other end, your jumper hose open, that's draining it out and it's right, good to go. Yeah, yeah. And I, I think that you guys up there, I, I really think you should use like those uh, cam locks or even, even unions on your tanks, on your supply, so you can just mm -hmm. take those off, blow them out, you know, just air hose, but blow them all out. That's what Paul that's did it. on one of the skids for yeah. somebody up north. Well, that's too. how they went and rise up there. If you've got a skid, you can lower your water tank down and pour antifreeze in it, and then run it all through your system, sure. the valves and everything, then blow it out. Yeah. What happens if you run the pump dry? <laughs> that's you get a no. Yeah. It'll it'll squeal like a pig. And you can imagine the stainless on stainless, the water actually lubricates this, if you will. Dry is not good. Um, dry, think of uh, running it with fluid in it and getting it hot enough to damage it. Yeah. Dry would happen pretty darn quick. Uh, yeah, I've had guys tell me, hey, uh, send me a picture. Yeah, I ran it so hot, and I can't remember who, I ran it so hot that it showed me a picture of the, the fitting on the end. It was melted all the pieces like it all hose came off why the hose come off look at that fitting you melted it it was that hot to melt that mm -hmm. and they said what do i do i said does it run they said yeah i said run it damage is done now you know you just run it but they're they're tougher than you think they really are i get you know i get the calls from from tim from you know no, no names will be mentioned it seems like you won't believe what someone <laughs> you know his pump and and, and Did he mention me? me <laughs> we, we literally see these fittings. Mel is a demo wolf. will give me pictures, or Paul will mail him, you know, a, a barb that's that's obviously deformed from heat. Now keep in mind, I've got hourly employees running my crap. 
I've never had one melt, so I don't know yeah. what some of you guys are actually doing. <laughs> no, no, I've never, I've never let it sit. Yeah, you have because I mean, if it's if it's going and flowing, there's no way it's ever going to melt on there. But um, they're they're incredibly resilient. Yeah, not not to push one of my products because I'm not that way. I didn't get here doing that. I didn't come here to do that. But the portion of that I have was pretty much talked into it by Ray to bring it here or wherever. You're welcome. I'm You're not. Welcome. <laughs> but those are those are never my intentions. But the the pro switch that I designed is basically to help us. We 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 need something that's ray proof or employee proof <laughs> to use. And sure. if if our yeah, besides running it dry, I can't help that. But if we never reach temperature, we don't know how long these are actually going to go if we never reach temperature. So the pro switch turning it off when you're not using it, you never reach a temperature. There's no way you can. Um, so that was the ultimate goal, but you had to make a chemical proof, and we finally got got that all figured out. And, and uh, so I'm anxious to see how long they will last. But uh, any more questions? Maybe maybe one more question. You know, when you when you run your your hose pipe and you get started, it's a good idea to turn the water on at it before you hook up. The truck, the oh, always, not always, yeah, air. yeah, yeah. You you want you want to run positive water through there. I I let mine go and, yeah. and this jumper. I I just keep caps on it and I'll just let it go until mm -hmm. all the air is out. Then I put the cap on. Then the pump is primed. I can run whatever I want through at that point. I went to cheap route and got the wrong electric motor. Can you just swap the motors out on the, on the pump pack? You know, if if you got the exact motor with the exact shaft and, and thread, you know, if it's the exact thread pattern and everything, uh, I don't I don't see why not. Uh, you just need to make sure you got the, the proper, you know, motor on. <coughs> yeah, I have a two horse. My rinse pump's a two horse and it's a beast. Raymond, 75 feet, I can get the back of the room and knock somebody's eye out from here, you know, it's a, but it's so much volume, it's, it would never be a, a, an application pump. I, I could probably choke it down, um, but the PSI would probably be so high that it would just spray mist everywhere, you know, you whatever. Have but, a chlorine tanker in there to feed yeah, it. yeah, but 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 for rinse, you know, I, I apply with with five to five and a half, and I rinse with ten to eleven. So that's efficiency. Right. Did you tell, did you, I stepped out for a second, did you tell about getting a few extra feet? Or, I think I mentioned about positive. Uh, I didn't, no, I didn't say that. So, um, you know, I know you had, you had done a, a video on that as well. Because if you're talking about positive water, you need a way to prime these, okay? So they don't necessarily prime all that well from a tank, but if you've got it like on an NPR or you have it down low on a rig, it will, it will certainly help the prime. But like with my crew, and you had mentioned about you know putting water through there, so we we hook up to the water, and we've got you know we're we're not going on water. Now we turn it on, and 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 so it, it, the pump's lubricated. It's shooting water out. Now, whenever I switch to my solution, I will notice a depending on the water flow, but I will notice that it cutting back a little bit on pressure. And a little bit on flow because you're, now I'm I'm pulling from a tank. You're drawing right. Um, and let's say I, I'm doing a, a 40 foot high hotel, 50 foot high, you know, a piece, and I'm, I need just five more foot, four more foot on there. Usually it's a gable in where you're three, you're three foot shy. And, and so <laughs> we go and you hit on water. You have your hose, your 200, 300 foot of hose charged up with solution. Tell the guys. Put me on water, and now I'm forcing 20, positive water. Twenty percent, twenty-five percent of solution, and I get an extra three to five foot. Yeah, you got 40, 50 seconds, depending on your hose, uh, of now a supercharge, a positive fed versus a draw. So you'll you'll get that extra three feet all day long. That's a good, and especially if you just have the remote, you can just. Yeah. His name is Mike. Yes. Yeah. All right. One quick one, uh, Can you, uh, Brenda. you put that motor anywhere height-wise? So it, it's put it it's better to have it at the base of your tanks rather than, than above. Um, once you get it over the top, it basically siphons and it feeds it. 
We got a lot more luck with them being down low. I put mine under my truck and underbody box. I've got a trailer and I was going to put it on the tundra. Just put it on the bottom. Don't mount it above the tanks. Yeah, um, something else too. I was talking about priming. Once it is primed, they're actually very good about holding prime on there. So yeah, we've but had times where we, you know, we've done some fences in neighborhoods. We'll prime it like you know a PVC neighborhood HOA fence. Clanny Z comes to mind. Oh, we'll God. prime these things in the shop. Drive five miles over there to the project, fire it up, and and we're able to. We're still, not going to reprime it. Yet. Still holding the prime. Yeah, yeah. So, but if it's above it and you have air leaks, it's going to drain back down into your tank and you got to get it back up. If it's underneath, it, if you open this up and once you have a prime, it'll drain your tank out just pulling it through just by gravity. So putting it in one of the closed boxes on a fender, you don't on a tank. That'd be fine, yeah, as long yeah. as it's not above the tank. So. Yeah. yeah. So, all right, guys, we got to wrap it up. That's, hopefully we got you some good insight on these and, and, uh, you know, don't be afraid of them. They've, they've been in service a long time. These are not new pumps to this industry. These are, if it's a new pump to you, it's a new pump to you, but it's been in use for a very long time. Um, so. Do you know if he sells those stands, the, the, the motor stands by themselves? The base? Yeah. It's actually a generic base, um, but it's got a 54J or something or something. I forget what it is. Um, you'd have to probably go through Gould's. Uh, the Goulds doesn't have anything to do with the motors. You know, they get the motors and then they put their adapter in and then they put everything on the front. But but uh, Goulds can help you out with that. Um, even power wash door might be able to get it. Does it matter if you mount it vertical or? or... Well, we, we've had a lot of you know theories about that. Uh, to me, I would if you're going to mount it, I would put the motor up, and that way the heat and everything can dissipate off the motor if you put it down it's going to try to push the heat and everything back through the motor which is well and the leak if it leaks if you've got the motor at the bottom and it leak. does leak it's going to come if down you on did all have it. a leak and it would look like one of raymond's so, um, uh, on, on the um uh, on, on the uh Fair he's man. like dayton dayton uh, if you look at the uh the, the dayton instruction manual it actually shows an orientation for mounting it vertical uh, and it says to them, it, uh, and on the instruction books, it's, it may it be the Myers, but, but it says have the pump head in a, right down, right. in a down route. Yeah. Um, yeah. My old soft wash system skid that I snatched the 12 volt out of, when I originally had it mounted, I mounted it to one of the struts up and down and used it for several months that way. Good job. How'd you mount it? Was it just Before we break this session, obviously there is a lot of interest in this. Tim will be available, uh, as I mentioned earlier, and certainly Raymond, uh, in the showroom floor where the actual equipment's at. Uh, if there's any additional questions that you have, uh, certainly pull Tim, pull Raymond aside, you know, in the, uh, in the convention floor, and they'll certainly uh, kind of dot the I and cross the T for you on this. So uh, let's give a round of applause to uh, Tim. So we're gonna we're gonna take a, a ten minute break. Check your emails, check your phone calls, check on your crews. Make sure to break anything while you're down here.